So um, there's probably not a lot I haven't seen in, in racing over the years. I've done it full time um, basically since uh, 2001. Um, oops, we will just, um, can we have the video first? Yep. Just get that out the way. I'm just going to show you a short, a short clip which happened not long ago at one of our race meetings. Now I work with guys who, um, on barrier staff, who, these are guys who work with horses all their life. That's what they do as their profession. They still make silly decisions. Continue to sing out and in the yard. You'll just see this in a minute. It's quite First short. First started by Reset out of Defiant. Yeah, he's about to go up lame game. Got him. Oh, that he's just guy kicked works out there and he's got rid of time. one of the barrier attendants. He made one he's silly decision. Here. One silly decision. So uh, I'm not quite Luckily sure if had we a vest on. may now All have the a delay. The ambulance personnel may vests. be required to... Uh, um, you'll see... We might just quickly see it again. In a way, he was fortunate. He went close to the horse, and the horse only got him with his hocks. Watch this. Yeah, he's a... Got him. Up lame game. He's all right. He's, well, he's just kicked out there, and he's got... As, as, you, as you see, we continued to load horses while he sat on the ground for a while, and the ambulance came and attended to him. You know, we have... Obviously, we have. Uh, yeah, okay, that might do. Um, <laughs> oh, he's just kicked out. We have am ambulances following our fields full time. We have uh, we we have utes with screens. We we try to defiant. We try to do it right. But one thing we haven't done over the years is any large animal rescue training. And um, as I say, despite the fact that people these people work with horses all the time. Sometimes, you know, you just don't think. He could have done that a hundred more times and got away with it and the horse wouldn't have kicked out. But people with their hands behind the horse, the horse is just, it hasn't really kicked. It's only just shaking hands. hands. So whatever you do, you just, he was in a zone that uh, he shouldn't have been in. But Okay, let's go to the top one first, please. Um, recently, that'll just send me which that one. Okay. Um, recently, we had a training uh, program here, and um, they'll show you some photos directly. Um, and was so Steve Pearson, who's the starter of the uh, thoroughbred racing here in South Australia, and myself attended, and. Having done it since 1975, and Steve Pearson, he was the clerk of the course before he became the starter, and he's been doing it for about 30 years or a bit more, most of all his working life. Um, anyway, so we went along and thought, well, we've probably seen most things in racing over the last 30-odd years. Um, can you teach old dogs new tricks? And the answer is yes, you can teach old dogs new tricks. And um, I found it very informative. Steve found it very informative. It really formalised a lot of things that we were doing subconsciously, um, but it did put them into something that made us think about how we do go about our work every, basically every day of the week. So this is now taken off around Australia, um, I'm pleased to say. Uh, Victoria have certainly embraced it well, uh, Western Australia have embraced it, uh, Hatchie's been uh, shuttled all over the countryside doing these things, Queensland have done it, uh, New South Wales are now running training programs for, their, uh, for all their barrier staff right throughout New South Wales, um, they're running seminars and, uh, and, and training days as well. Um, so this is a quick... Um, if I can get on, how do I click on that link? This is just a quick YouTube video uh, from Western Australia um, showing uh, what they were doing in their training. 
we can, yep, there we go. Only moments away from race time and while punters are putting their last minute bets on and pondering their investments, here at the barriers it's a hive of activity where skill, composure and nerves are still required. No, you've got to sort of get, get the adrenaline down and keep calm, otherwise you know, the horse can sense that as well. A little bit nervous when you first start, start out uh, working at the barrier, but uh, after a while it's, uh, it's all... Every week you see horses get in different positions and that, and you're always learning about the new ones coming through. But uh, most of the horses that, that come through are pretty well, pretty well educated, the trainers do a good job with them. Sometimes, you know, they're fine at the trials and they get to the races and then you put more pressure on them and they, they start to, uh, you know, a bit more persuasion to, to get into the gates than, than usual. We've got a good team, everyone gets on really well, and, uh, and you need to, you know, the situation gets a bit scary. There's always, you know, someone's going to jump in there and help you out. And the jockeys appreciate that as well. You know, they, uh, they really appreciate us get, getting in there and getting them out as, as quickly as possible. technical large animal emergency rescue, something that we've been uh, looking at in Australia for the last couple of years. And uh, what, what's happening today, we're working with the race industry, I'm from Fire Rescue New South Wales, and we're uh, helping them develop better ways to deal with animal emergencies. Anything that we can do that's going to make it uh, better for the animals, racing is really on board with it. For us as well, like, as you can see, you know, it's sort of it's not natural for horses to, to be enclosed in, you know, in barriers like this, so you know, you've got to know what to do when they do get a bit agitated or try and get under the front or start kicking. They're pretty much leading the way, hopefully, in the next uh, few, few years. Uh, Racing Australia will be on board and as a leader for the rest of the world. Your own safety, others. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good rundown on, on what's been happening around Australia. Um, now, obviously, you've got a mute horse there that uh, doesn't kick you or strike you or whatever. But um, it's given us all uh, new food for thought um, uh, in the way we go about uh, working in these situations. Um, we're always under pressure. Uh, Sky Racing, for instance, uh, who we depend on to uh, broadcast our races and who uh, we get uh, monetary turnover from, uh, from the gambling, they give us about a three-minute window to run a race. So if you've got a three-minute window, things have got to happen pretty quickly, otherwise you're on Sky Racing too, your turnover goes down and nobody makes any money. Um, we flick on to the... I want to come back to that one in a minute. But. So, I've just talked about... Um, um, sorry, yeah, we'll stay on this one for a minute. Yep. Um, as I say, we've all around Australia, this is taking off. Um, Hatchie's been busy uh, going to these programs. In South Australia, uh, as I said, Steve Pearce and I have done... Uh, done the uh, program with uh, Hatchie one weekend and um, we're now going, putting in place uh, training our own barrier staff in doing exactly uh, the same thing that we've been taught um, and uh, so talking to some of these barrier staff are actually looking forward to uh, getting a new perspective on the way they go about their business as well. Um, Racing Tasmania, um, they're actually in the process of restructuring where uh, race clubs will no longer employ the barrier staff but uh, the racing or central racing authority will employ them and that enables them then to undertake better training procedures, which they hope to do in the next 12 months. Okay, now can we... F Yep, go to Queensland Racing. Okay, so these are the sort of things. These are just some photos around, from around various states uh, about the type of things that we're doing. This is a scenario which we see occasionally. 
surprisingly, a horse, despite it being confined within the barrier like that, can actually click, kick up that, that height um, and get its hind legs over and, of course, then they're suspended. Um, and the problem you have then, of course, is to actually get those back gates open again. And uh, uh, we go to the next one. You can see uh, uh, rope up over the top of the uh, top of the stalls. Um, quite quick and easy to get that uh, strap under the horse's flanks elevated just to take the pressure off those gates. <coughs> one either side pulls, pulls the lever and you can open the gates. But they're nearly impossible to open once you've got all that pressure on, on top of them. Uh, Racing SA, Julie, thank you for these photos. Um, this was conducted just out the back here. Um, as you can see in a minute, the fire and rescue boys turned up with their toys. Um, Hatchie got pretty excited about that. Um, the rescue glide in use, uh, putting the horse, getting the horse in and out of the float. Horse on the rescue glide. Horse over the fence. Um, interesting there, using the glide as a as a protective mechanism um, for, to get personnel up close to the horse, obviously to protect them. Up in a sling. It is re really never ceases to amaze me over the years, having uh, been involved in slinging animals. Once you've got them off the ground and they can't get any traction, how well they actually will accept the situation. And it's the same with obviously the pool. You probably talked about that uh, yesterday. Yours truly. Uh, I actually was assigned to be the vet on that one. Uh, okay, we'll go to, we've been done racing SA, we'll go to RVL. Racing Victoria have really embraced it um, and uh, um, Cara Shelley who was meant to be giving this presentation instead, instead of me, um, uh, but obviously it's an extremely busy time for them, um, so uh, I was given the job. Hatchie uh, is always in there. Who undertook the training? Veterinarians, starters, barrier attendants, stewards, um, track managers and supervisors. They had harness racing reps there, horse council reps. Um, so they've really embraced the whole gamut of people who are in charge. Um, Course material. Basic rescue techniques. Horses under barriers. That's a, not a, a pretty common scenario. Um, the one where the horse gets his legs over the back is not a common scenario. I've seen only half a dozen of those over the years. This one's particularly common. Um, and it's not always easy to work because when these horses get under in that restricted space. First of all, you may have a horse either side of it in the barrier, so your priority is to get them out, um, otherwise they're going to get their leg broken by this horse that's thrashing around. And uh, then the next scenario is that you've got to try and do something with that horse um, and not get, uh, not put yourself in the, in the hot zone where you're going to get kicked yourself. Again, just working on that same scenario that we talked about. Um, this horse obviously uh, went down after the race uh, in the uh, in the winner's stall. So it was quite interesting. <laughs> um, it's never it's never a good scenario when the when we actually I have had a horse collapse in the mounting yard on more than one occasion. Um, and uh, it always seems to, it always, Murphy's Law, it'll, it'll always happen on uh, 
Adelaide Cup Day when you got uh, 15, 20,000 people there watching you from the grandstand. Um, uh, and uh, you can feel the heat a bit then. Race day scenarios. That's, yep, rescue glide. Uh, hopefully we'll talk our uh, jurisdiction into buying one of these um, very shortly. Um, I think uh, we would improve our ability obviously to handle horses in, in uh, situations. Um, it's interesting these guys talk about experience um, and uh, it, it does make a huge difference. Uh, luckily I work at the races mostly with uh, experienced guys but we try to get the younger vets in and give them, um, give them some experience before we, before we let them loose. The problem always, um, just go back to the first one for a minute. Uh, no, is that, uh, hang on. I'll come back to that in a minute. No, I want you to go right down to the bottom one. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, the problem with uh, uh, is the... Uh, is even with experience, we will make mistakes. You're working under a pretty high pressure environment. You've got to make very rapid decisions. The horse mucks up on the barrier and hurts itself. You've got to get it out. You've got to make a decision within seconds about whether you think it should run or not. I've got a pretty hard and fast rule. If there's any sign of blood, you're out, you're scratched, you're not going around. Um, if you show me one step of lameness, you're out, you're not going around. Um, you make these decisions all the time and um, you get under a lot of pressure because you, you get back to the mounting yard after the race and you've got a trainer and half a dozen owners waiting at the gate with baying for your blood because you've scratched their horse when they thought it was about to win a million dollar race. <coughs> so yeah, you're all the time under pressure. But um, it's uh, even with experienced uh, experience uh, occasionally I think well that was a bad decision but um, that's what you do under pressure. Experience in assessing fractures uh, it was great the the lecture by uh, Josh earlier um, this morning uh, the, and uh, talking about veterinarians with experience it really is important and I think I pick things that uh, probably less experienced vets wouldn't, and make a decision as to whether we can transport, whether we euthanise uh, a whole lot quicker, which obviously is uh, better for the horse in the long run. <laughs> Just hopefully you, all you visitors have sampled some good red wine from the Barossa. Um, by the sound of it last night, a few of them had a good sampling of it. My, fa my father-in-law, who uh, is now departed this world, but um, he was quite an eccentric gentleman. He used to get quotes and write them up on, the, on his shed door. <coughs> anyway, but he was a great lover of Barossa Reds, big, bold Shirazes and uh, uh, what have you. And uh, someone wrote on the shed that cannabis is the safest and most natural of all pleasure-giving mood alterants. And his reply that he wrote underneath, a thin and weedy beast compared to the noble bruise of yesteryear. It was totally in reference to Barossa Reds, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, uh, everybody, for listening. And uh, if anyone's got any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. But, um... We'll just take one question, because uh, our volunteers out there waiting for us. I'll be quick since morning tea is coming, but just a quick question for like Racing Victoria. Are they geared up themselves to perform rescue or will they be making that call uh, for assistance from emergency services? Uh, we are obviously from Victoria, so just be curious to sort of see yeah, how they're they, geared Yeah, um, anything which happens on course will be what they provide. Uh, that's pretty much a given. Uh, there's not, the, 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 the time frame alone means they've got to be prepared, ready to go whatever the situation, uh, they, can't be, they can't be waiting to 
get you guys cranked up. Not not saying you're going to take a lot of time to get there, but you might take 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour to an hour. The, is, the situation doesn't demand that. We're, we're, we're very much in the public view. We're televised. It's, the whole thing is, is, it needs really rapid attention. We're, 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 we're as geared up as we can afford to be at this stage and hopefully in the future we'll be more geared up as we uh, get more money. But Racing Victoria, I guarantee you, they are, they are well geared up for it. Yep. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have 10 minutes for morning tea.